are some of the most memorable images to grace the pages of magazines and newspapers, but some of these iconic images have been altered. Last year, we visited an exhibit in New York that exposed news photographs manipulated to fool the public. These altered images prove why you can't always believe your eyes and raise serious questions about ethics of photojournalism. On a busy street corner in the Bronx, between bodegas and tenement walk-ups, a small museum is trying to make a big stir. Michael Camber runs the Bronx Documentary Center. He's created an exhibit of photos going back over 150 years that show our perspective of history, then and now, deserves a close second look. This is a great, great, uh, just an iconic photo from World War II. One of the most published photos of all time, actually. The photographer, Kaldi, was actually a, a Soviet Army photographer. Uh, he wanted to replicate Joe Rosenthal's famous photo from Iwo Jima. He had a flag made, he flew to Berlin, he got the soldiers to go up on the roof of the Reichstag. The whole scene is completely fabricated, it's just not a real event. I think at its core, we put this show together because we want to get the debate going about photographs. The generation of photographers and photojournalism that I grew up with had very set sort of rules and ethics and standards and we're watching those just kind of dissolve in front of our eyes. From what I can see, it's just kind of falling apart. I want to have that conversation that this is something that's always gone on. It's fascinating that the very first photo that we were able to find from 1855, I mean, it's the original work of photojournalism. There's two versions, one with cannonballs on the road and one with no cannonballs on the road. Right in the beginning, they were already changing things. I would say the Iranians with the missile launch a few years back was hugely successful. Only three of the missiles launched, you can see here. So they simply cloned in one of the missiles to make it appear as if it was a successful launch, when in fact it wasn't. That picture ran all over the United States. I mean, it ran on the front page of the LA Times and you know, other newspapers. Hugely effective, but in fact, extensively manipulated and not a real true representation of what happened. I think that people are really just going to lose faith, certainly in, in photojournalism and documentary photography. I think once people see photos and say, eh, I wonder if that really happened, or I wonder if that's been modified, or I wonder if the photographer staged that, then we've just lost all credibility. It really damages the profession, it damages the media, I think it really damages America. These are the OJ covers, and we wanted to show these side by side, Newsweek and Time. And Time took the, the mugshot that came from the LAPD and got an illustrator to really darken the photo and put this dark vignetting around it. Um, you can see it's almost black, black here. Uh, it just looks really threatening and, and sort of menacing. Uh, and that caused a huge uproar. People all, all over the United States were, were outraged. And Time actually had to pull the cover and republish it. My best favorite bogus celebrity shot, it would have to be the Oprah photo. The TV guy did a story on Oprah. Uh, they put her head on Anne Margaret's body. Just a wonderful misrepresentation. Totally bogus, but really campy and kind of interesting. We're seeing it with a lot with, with magazine covers, and of course with anything having to do with celebrities and stars. There it's just accepted. People have to be able to believe in what they're seeing uh, and know that this represents you know, the historical record, certainly in a news situation. I think we have to maintain the viewer's trust in, in photojournalism. Um, we have to get it right. We have to create honest accounts of what really happened. There were three other photos in the Bronx Dock Gallery that were not part of the exhibit. David told us they are the photos of three friends and colleagues. Tim Hetherington and Chris Hondros were both killed covering Libya's Arab Spring civil uprising in 2011. Journalist James Foley was killed in Syria in 2014, the first American beheaded by ISIS. Reminders that neither freedom nor truth come without costs. Coming up next week on Full Measure, one of our favorite stories this year, the story of an Afghan Air Force that never left the ground. Hundreds of millions of your tax dollars spent on a giant boondoggle aircraft too dangerous to fly. Approximately $600 million for 20 planes that don't work, never worked, couldn't be used, were poorly maintained, and were eventually turned into scrap. That's next week on Full Measure. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching. I'm Cheryl Atkinson. Until next time, we'll be searching for more stories that hold powers accountable.